Michael, we're here at the European Business Summit in Brussels uh, this year. One of the issues that uh, you've been talking about is what Europe can learn from Asia. You took part in the panel this morning. Can you briefly take us through what you said at the panel? Yes, I was uh, representing the Executive Council of the American Chamber of Commerce there. Uh, the focus was very much on the learning points, as you said, and many of them are in the EU 2020 agenda. Uh, I think our learning is, uh, and our focus was, what going to be the actions. We had the Lisbon agenda, it didn't all happen, but it's clear, we need to stimulate growth. To stimulate growth, we need to drive innovation, and, and that drives education and other questions. That was the topic. So what concretely can Europe learn from Asia? Well, take the area of innovation, for instance. One of the agenda items on the EU 2020 is around sustainability. Uh, but it was South Korea that invested the most in this area last year. And it's not just in the high-tech or new-tech areas. It's also traditional areas like agriculture. Uh, the China filed more patents in EU. Over 50% of all the food pay, pay, patents in EU. So maybe it's time to uh, look at reallocating some of the agricultural spend to, to innovation and, and drive that. And the other one is education. Very focused on STEM skills, the mathematics, physics. Uh, Europe will going to need a little bit of that balance back again towards those traditional skills to drive some of the education and innovation that we're going to need to fuel that growth. Can you give some good examples? Oh, yes, absolutely. In, in terms of growth in Europe or in terms of in growth the, in Asia? In terms of Asia that is going well over there and that we could learn, that we could apply directly here in Europe. Yeah, I think we see very directly now the investment that China has done over a long period of time in STEM skills coming through in manufacturing. In Singapore, they've taken it one step further to cross-faculty training, uh, which is the applied science between areas. And you see some of the lowest unemployment rates, some of the highest salaries, and, 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 and a very fast-growing economy. So it's a very clear learning area for Europe to drive the specific uh, education scheme, I think, towards some of the STEM skills uh, and get the innovation uh, fuel behind it. So, yeah, uh, you can look in... Um, agriculture, you can look in high-tech, um, they're already into the content R&D type projects, um, not just South Korea but also Japan, which perhaps has more in common with Europe. In China we are seeing a move away from the factory perhaps to the laboratory. Uh, they are starting to file more patents, they are starting to do more innovation. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much.